immigrants in our country, not only taking jobs, but many of them are causing problems beyond belief. And you see that all over. We have to straighten out the problem with illegal immigration. It starts with getting the bad ones, you know, the gangs in, you saw it. The current levels. But there is a real and genuine threat. When ISIS say they want to flood our continent with half a million Islamic extremists, they mean it. And there is nothing in this document that will stop those people from coming. Indeed, I fear we face a direct threat to our civilization if we allow large numbers of people from that war torn region into Europe. It is ironic that nine days before a British general election, Mr Cameron and Mr Miliband are not engaged in this debate and in fact the UK can do nothing. We are impotent. We have surrendered our ability to get involved. I promise my party will stand up to this impending disaster for all concerned. It's 10 feet tall and it's a fence. We're going to have a real war. And people are going to come into our country and I want people to come in. I want people of great talent to come in. But I want a lot of people to come in. They have to come in legally. They've got to come in. If we don't have them come in legally, we don't have a country. We don't have borders. We don't have a country to get involved and to try and help. But the real question we face is what are we to do? Are we to go down the Australian system in dealing with this crisis? And indeed, the Australian Premier, Tony Abbott, has offered us his advice and help. Australia faced this. And Australia not only have stopped the boats from coming, they've stopped people from drowning. But no, we're not interested in what the Australians have done. We have decided that we can deal with this on our own. So we decided that people can come and that people won't be sent back. Now I suspect that it's a shock, it will be a hell of a shock, uh, to many European citizens, including the British, to understand that we've already agreed a common European asylum system. And what today is about and today's resolution... It's ten feet tall and it's a fence. We're going to have a real war. And people are going to come into our country and I want people to come in. I want people of great talent to come in. But I want a lot of people to come in. They have to come in legally. They've got to come in. If we don't have them come in legally, we don't have a country. We don't have borders. We don't have a country. They have to. Its failings will destroy the individual rights of people and of nations. My country has always believed in parliamentary democracy so strongly that twice in the last century it risked everything to fight for parliamentary democracy, not just for Britain, but for the rest of Europe too. Uh, and I actually believe that for all of us that believe in democracy and want to see it re-implemented, the British referendum offers a golden opportunity. <laughs> Four years ago I stood here and said that bombing Libya would be a huge mistake. Uh, but of course the UK Parliament and this Parliament were desperate. There was a clamour uh, to go to war. And so now we have a failed state of Libya, uh, which is now a conduit being used for criminal trafficking gangs trying to bring people. Right. We have a city called Detroit. Right. A disaster. Detroit is a disaster. It's a poor shade on the Commodore. Yeah. So, what are we going to do to help those cities? I know we can bring them in the country. Yeah, why don't you t t try turning that on? It's, it's a good question, actually. He's talking about Detroit, which is a total mess. And it's Detroit, and it's Baltimore. It's plenty of cities. I mean. And of nations. My country has always believed in parliamentary democracy so strongly that twice in the last century it risked everything to fight for parliamentary democracy, not just for Britain, but for the rest of Europe, too. Uh, and I actually believe that for all of us that believe in democracy, and what is a very big is a very big question as to the anchor base. They've been talking about it for years. It's a very big question as to whether or not the 14th Amendment actually covers it. We're going to find out whether or not it does. Changing the 14th Amendment would take years and years, the long, drawn-out process. A lot of people think that it is absolutely, in terms of anchor babies, that it is not covered. So we're going to find out. But, but look. To put the cork back in and realizing it's not possible. So you've turned to somebody else to sort out your own problem. So let's talk Turkey. They have taken your weakness and they've now decided they're going to blackmail you.
Not only do they want €3 billion Euros from you this year, they're going to want €3 billion Euros from you every single year. And in return, they've given absolutely no guarantees whatsoever that they will stop people from coming or indeed take people back. And they've I can't believe it. They want anything Trump and all this because they respect you. They have to respect you. So I will take care of the military. We will be so strong and so powerful that nobody's going to mess with us. We won't have to mess with us. Go ahead, with a book, great book. You take depressed properties in distressed areas I do. and turn them around. Right. These things I got out of this thing. Right. We have a city called Detroit. Right, a disaster. Detroit is a disaster. It's negotiated on the Commodore. Yeah. So, what are we going to do to help those cities? I know we can bring them in the country. Talk about yeah, what are you t t try turning? Brished. At the Mediterranean, I've seen the idealized Schengen area lead to the free movement of Kalashnikovs, and every single week and month we see the attempt to create a single state of Europe, which of course the European peoples don't want. But the EU's common asylum policy is the lowest ebb for policy yet. Chancellor Merkel took the cork out of a champagne bottle and said anyone could come, and now you're trying to put the cork back in and realizing it's not possible. So you've turned to somebody else to sort out your own problem. So let's talk Turkey. They have taken your weakness and they've now decided they're going to blackmail you. Not only do they want three billion euros from... A woman is going to have a baby. They wait on the border. Just before the baby, they come over to the border. They have the baby in the United States. We now take care of that baby. Social Security, Medicare, education. Give me a break. It doesn't work that way. The parents have to come in legal. Now, we're going to have to find out what's going to happen from a court standpoint. But many people, many of the great scholars, say that anchor babies are not covered. We're going to find out. Mr. Trump. Education. Education. There was a conference today, six candidates, other candidates, and the Trump administration. Much railing against the federal government's intrusiveness, bad statements, and reform. Commodore. Yeah. So, what are we going to do to help those cities? I know we can bring them in the country. Talk about yeah, what are you t t try turning that on? It's, it's a good question, actually. He's talking about Detroit, which is a total mess. And it's Detroit and it's Baltimore. It's plenty of cities. I mean, there are plenty of cities in the Detroit situation. Nobody in this room will recognize that, but actually, the peoples of Europe are saying we were never asked whether we wanted this, this has been foisted upon us. And we need to understand why EMU doesn't work. Those monsters, Cole and Mitterrand, backed up by the clever but dangerous Delors, believed that if they put in place an economic and monetary union, then as night follows day, there would be political union, that there would be an acceptance of this project, that the north and south of Europe would converge that we'd all start to love each other, that we'd all begin to feel a European identity, that we'd all begin to show allegiance to the flag and the anthem. Those of us, of course, that criticised this were told that we were extremists and we lacked vision. Well, one vision we didn't lack is we understood that the countries of Europe are different and that if you try and force together different people or different economies, without first seeking the consent of those people, it is unlikely to work. And the plan has failed. This isn't just Greece we're talking about today. The whole of the Mediterranean. Now he was going to be a great cheerleader for the country. I really did. I felt at least he'll be, I mean, we wanted Mitt to win, and unfortunately, Mitt let us down. I mean, look, we can all say he's a nice man, and he was, but he choked. Something happened to him. The last month he disappeared. I promise you folks, I will never disappear. In the world. So we are terrible at education, but we spend far more money than anybody else. The Department of Education has done a terrible job. I happen to be a person that does not believe in Common Core. I believe the people of New Hampshire, locally, locally, should work mostly on the education. Do we allow the little pieces? Yes, but largely, 
it should be shut down. And I'm very surprised to hear that other of the candidates don't want to touch because that really doesn't. Mr. Matter. Trump. Say it again. Have I gotten under Jeb Bush's skin? I, I don't know. Uh, I will tell you this. You mentioned the word skin. He said the other day, one of the dumber things I've heard ever in politics, when talking about Iraq, that we, the United States, he said, have to show them that we have skin in the game in order to go into Iraq. We've lost $2 trillion. But this now is to be used as an opportunity to build a European army. And, and when, and when, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Verhofstadt, I know that by heckling, you increase your hits on YouTube, because otherwise, <coughs> nobody in Europe wants to listen to you, and I'll the I'll President I'll really yeah. ought to let second, me speak. Second, I'll Thank I'll you. I'll um, <coughs> Thank you. Thank I don't believe that people actually, do we have negotiators? Do we have anybody that knows what they're doing? Not only the 24 days, which by the way, it's much more than that because the 24 days to start the clock takes a long time. Not only the fact that they still have our prisoners, every single aspect of that deal is incompetent. And it's a deal that should be approved. And the amazing thing is, even if it's not approved now, they get $150 billion plus plus. And they're going to use that money for terror all over the world. It is one of the great dumb deals of our time. So, so what is it? What amount of that we would no side deal, and yet we find out the day that in fact there was? Well, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised to hear that there are side deals. The White House doesn't know what they're doing. I mean, that's been proven, whether it's Obamacare with a $5 billion website. The White House truly has no clue what they're doing. And the Iran deal is a disaster. It's a disaster. It's going to lead to, in my opinion, nuclear proliferation is going to so many things are going to come out of that deal for the bad. And I'll tell you, it was so outrageous, 47 ayatollahs wrote us a letter trying to explain to Huckabee how our system works. <laughs> It gets worse. <laughs> Just this week, Michelle Bachman actually, actually predicted that I would bring about the biblical end of days. <laughs> the country responded, that's not going to be a problem. <laughs> Don't sweat that one. <laughs> and Donald Trump is here. Still. <laughs> anyway.